Ken Rogoff was chief economist at the IMF. He's now a professor of economics and public policy at Harvard University. He joins us live now. Ken, thank you so much for being with us. You think about some of these sanctions, um, banning any new sort of investment into Russia by anyone in the United States, um, sanctions against Russian banks. What do you think are the most effective tools, the most effective economic tools that the US and the EU has at their disposal to curb Russian aggression, especially when it comes to the right type of sanctions? Well, they've certainly pulled a lot of the levers. And the one that just, I think, blew people's minds was that they froze the reserves of the central bank, which is almost tantamount to a, I wouldn't quite call it a default, but a suspension of convertibility of US debt to Russia. It's remarkable. Uh, it's been done, you know, for in a couple other small cases, but not like this. But clearly, uh, energy is continuing to give Russia money. Russia doesn't just depend on energy for its exports, but the Russian government depends on energy for its tax revenues. It's paying for the war. Uh, gas is important. Oil is actually three times as important as gas is. And of course, as long as the rest of the world is buying energy from Russia, it's helping pay. Now, if we cut off, it doesn't mean it won't go elsewhere to China, but I think it would have a pretty dramatic impact nevertheless. So right now, I mean, you talked about oil and gas, for example, but there is a debate right now about banning imports of Russian coal. Um, how significant is coal in all of this um, financially? I mean, I think it's much less significant than the other two, uh, but it's very politically tolerable because Europe you know, wants to be green and so they're banning coal. I, I think they're going to end up doing more. And I must say, although the Germans say that it would be, you know, put them into deep recession, I think I've seen a number of estimates that suggest it wouldn't be so bad for so long. They do need to find a way to share gas around Europe. There are parts of northern Italy, for example, that are very, very dependent on Russian gas. So they need to find a framework for trying to work together to spread the cost. But I, I don't think it's something that's not manageable. So when would be a realistic timeline if Europe was going to say, listen, we have to have to wean ourselves off of Russian energy completely, when would be a realistic sort of uh, date or year to have um, as a goal? Well, it's going to be painful whenever they do it, but I think it would be realistic to do it immediately, you know, to do it within a couple of weeks. This isn't something that's undoable. It's like in anything, there are special interests, there are people who would lose a lot. You need to try to find a way to compensate that. We're not very good at that. Uh, even in our democracies. But it depends on how motivated they are to do it. I mean, there's no question that that's the big thing fueling Russian finances at the moment. Russia has plenty of money because they're collecting funds from all their energy exports. And in terms of, I mean, we've spoken so much about uh, the possible effect on countries like Germany, if uh, uh, Germany had to wean itself off of Russian natural gas. But what about the long term or rather short term effects on the U.S. economy of some of these sanctions, be it just the, the Russian sanctions combined with um, higher energy prices here in the U.S., higher gas prices on, on top of that, the Fed rate hikes we're going to be seeing this year. What do you think the overall economic impact of this war uh, and sanctions that follow is going to be on, on the United States? So frankly, on the United States, they're way smaller than for Europe. And I think the big thing that people are feeling are gas prices, inflation, in Inflation was already in a bad place. Uh, there are all sorts of supply chain issues, but uh, the, the big losers, the countries that are really, really vulnerable are countries that depend on food imports. Ukraine and Russia combine, I think, for 5% of global wheat exports or something. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a much larger number, 30% of global wheat exports, very important in energy. So uh, there are a lot of countries feeling this. I mean, for the United States, it's politically difficult because Americans are just never that tuned to foreign problems. But I think Ukraine has gotten a lot of attention. Uh, energy aside, the number of sanctions we've seen against Russian banks, what sort of impact is that having on the country? On the U.S. or on Russia? On Russia. 
Well, it's been less immediate than people thought. So some people thought that when we put all these sanctions, cut them off from the global clearing system from Visa and MasterCard, they would fall apart. Uh, their payment system would collapse. People wouldn't be able to use the subway. And to some extent, Russia has been preparing for this. But it's certainly a long term drain on the economy. We're talking about Russia certainly having a recession worse than during the pandemic, uh, 10, 20 percent of GDP fall. It's it's phenomenal uh, kind of recession Russia is having. Of course, they view themselves as in a war. They have a whole propaganda effort energizing people around this. But of course, it's quite severe. I don't know. Will it change anything in Russia? That's hard to know. I mean, we haven't succeeded in North Korea, Cuba, Iran, et cetera, Venezuela. But uh, I, th I think, you know, it's it's certainly helpful and uh, uh, these sanctions need to be pushed on as hard as we can. All right. Ken Rogoff, uh, live for us there. Thank you so much for joining us.